Well, as you can see, we've been joined on the stage by Jeremy. So without further ado, it's my job now to uh, introduce, uh, to speak, the leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, Carwin, and thank you, Donna, for the introduction today, and thank you for inviting me here today. And the speech we just heard from Emily was utterly superb. It shows how strong our party is and what good hands it's in for the future with that generation coming forward. Thank you very much for everything you said this morning. It's a pleasure, obviously, to be here, uh, but it's tempered with sadness of what's happened this week. The events in Westminster on Wednesday afternoon showed the brutality that one man can reap by his behaviour. But it also showed the humanity, the bravery and the solidarity that really defines us and that binds us together in times of darkness and adversity. The police, security personnel, National Health Service staff, they ran towards danger to put themselves at risk to protect the lives of others. They're the real heroes that did so much to protect people in London on Wednesday. And I'm sure you will all... <clears throat> I'm sure you will all join with me in paying tribute to the police officer, Keith Palmer, who lost his life. He's somebody that MPs see, chat to, smile to every day, and he died in the line of duty. I think we send our solidarity and comfort to his family from this conference here today. And to all the others who lost loved ones from all over the world, who were injured from all over the world, we send our love. Our values of unity and solidarity are needed now more than ever. We know from previous occasions that some sick people have tried to sow division and hate. And so please, Look after each other, help one another, and think of one another. Communities must come together in solidarity, not be divided by those that seek to promote hate and division amongst us. It's our job as a movement and a party to bring people together, and that's what we will do. <clears throat> I want to say thank you, Carwin, to you and to the Labour Assembly members for continuing to show that Labour can make a huge difference in government. Special mention must go also to Mark Drayford, the Chancellor of the Exchequer for Wales, who is implementing your programme despite the fact that the budget has been cut year on year, 6% in real terms by the end of the decade. That's equivalent to almost 1.2 billion less, less for vital public services, a decade of cuts imposed by the Tories in Westminster. Our Shadow Well Secretary, Christina Rees, who's doing a brilliant job, is fighting your corner in the House of Commons, working with Gerald Jones, our Shadow Minister, and I want to thank them both for the fantastic work that they do in speaking up for Wales. I also want to put on record my thanks to Jo Stevens for all the work that she did when she held the brief beforehand. Jo, thank you very much for everything you did. And Wales has great representation in Westminster. Neil Griffiths, who's here today, our Shadow Defence Secretary, who accompanied me recently to the unveiling of the Iraq and Afghanistan Memorial, recognising those involved and lost their lives in that conflict. Whatever our view on those wars, we should always respect those who are sent to fight and risk their lives, and many have paid the ultimate price for it. I also want to pay a warm tribute to our great Welsh Labour campaigner, Carolyn Harris, leading an excellent campaign for the Children's Funeral Fund. And what a disgrace. <laughs> what an utter disgrace that in the budget, the Tories again ignored this simple and humane demand that parents who suffer the loss of a child don't have to then worry about the financial costs of giving them a funeral. I know that Labour councils, such as those in Cardiff and Swansea, have already waived the fees, as has co-op funeral care. 
But at a time when council budgets are squeezed and billions have been given away in corporate tax cuts, we should be able to just about find £10 million a year for this very basic, decent, humane measure. What is wrong with them that they can't do that? I, <clears throat> I want to praise another of uh, my good comrades, although a Welsh comrade, although he lives in England, Mark Sawatka, for his campaign to change the system of presumed consent for organ donation. Very important. In Wales, you've done that, and lives are being saved as a result. I was so proud to speak alongside Mark at the recent National Health Service demonstration in London. It was his first speech he had made for several months, his first public engagement since a successful heart transplant. And I'm glad he's one of the half million people who are now members of our party. Welcome, Mark. <laughs> Deemed Deemed consent for organ donation is just one example of the difference that uh, Labour government makes. As Nybevan said, the NHS will last as long as there are folk left with the faith to fight for it. And in Wales, you have that faith. Because it's the only country in the UK to show an improvement in ambulance response times, improving outcomes for stroke and cancer patients, and the British Heart Foundation says you're a world leader for cardiac rehabilitation. And as NHS budgets are cut in England, the Welsh Labour government has found an extra 240 million in their last budget, taking your combined spending on health and social care 6% higher than that in England. And the Welsh government in Cardiff Bay has achieved so much more. On social care, You've, you've, you've protected funding and seen delayed discharges fall, unlike in England, where under the Tories, they've risen by over a third. And with a flying start for early years to help children get the very best start in life. And then there's your childcare offer of 30 hours a week for working parents of three and four year olds, free breakfasts for primary school children, 500 extra police community support officers to help keep our neighbourhoods safe. Record rates of recycling, the second best of any country in Europe and the third best in the world, protecting the environment and preserving resources for future generations. And when the Tories abolished the Agricultural Wages Board, the Welsh Labour Government established the Agricultural Advisory Panel for Wales to try and protect the wages of those working in the farming sector. And on housing, where you are building homes for those affected by the Tories' cruel bedroom tax, investing 200 million in a warm home scheme to insulate thousands of homes across the country, and congratulations to Flincher Labour Council building council homes again. I also... <laughs> I also commend your decision to end right to buy when the government in Westminster is only replacing one council home for every six sold off, then we know what you're doing is helping the housing situation instead of selling off good quality housing. There's so much to be proud of in Labour Wales. Even constrained by cuts in your block grant, what Labour has achieved in Wales stands as a beacon. A beacon that shines a light on the Tories' abject failure, socially, economically and morally their never-ending cuts agenda, whilst at the same time giving away £70 billion in the next six years to the rich and big business shows where their priorities lie. Austerity is a political choice, not an economic necessity. Britain's infrastructure is second rate and falling even further behind other major economies. This government has an abysmal record. They failed to modernise the economy, whether it's in broadband, energy, transport or housing. And at the same time, they've not done enough to make finance available to the innovative small business sector. That's why Labour is committed to establishing a national investment bank with regional investment banks for every region of England. The Labour Party is working to develop a fair economy that works for everyone. John McDonnell is travelling around the country in order to bring new policies and strategies together for a fair, economic, a fair economy and society. This year, 
the Welsh Labour government is creating the Development Bank for Wales with its purpose to create and safeguard over 5,500 jobs a year by 2022, providing more than a billion of investment support to Welsh business over that period. This hasn't come out of the blue. Labour in Wales has nearly two decades of experience of working with small business and local councils to develop the role of Finance Wales into the Development Bank for Wales. And our business team at Westminster will take a keen interest in the launch of the Development Bank and the work it does to generate growth and jobs. Last week, the Prime Minister twice accused me of wanting to bankrupt Britain by borrowing money to fund investment. But as every business knows, there's a world of difference between borrowing for capital spending and borrowing to fund the payroll and day-to-day -day trading or service delivery. As any homeowner who has ever had a mortgage knows, taking on a huge debt can save you money in the long run. We should not be afraid of debt or borrowing. At the end of the Second World War, the Labour government of Clement Attlee didn't say, oh dear, debt is 250% of GDP. Let's park those grand ideas about public ownership, a national health service, building council homes, or creating the protection of social security. No. They built a country to be proud of. They established the institutions that made our country fairer, more equal, and stopped people being held back because of the poverty of where they were born. But people are being held back today, despite the best efforts of the government here in Wales. Disposable incomes are the lowest in Britain. Energy bills are the highest in Britain. One in four Welsh workers earns less than the living wage. An estimated 90,000 people on zero hours contracts. Those facts are a direct consequence of Tory ideology. An ideology that believes, an ideology that believes that our national assets should be sold off to the highest bidder. That's the only industry that matters, is the one in the City of London's square mile. That trade unions should have the most restrictive laws anywhere in Europe. That if you cut taxes on the rich and big business, it will trickle down to us all. Remember that one? And their latest one, that you can cut your way to growth and prosperity. Well, we reject every one of those tenets of Tory ideology. We need a political settlement and a new economic settlement. As we leave the European Union, and the process is starting next week, it's time for Labour to set out our agenda, our vision for Britain. So our agenda is about investment, so that we support industries, succeed and create the high skill, high pay and high productivity jobs that have been destroyed in so many communities. The Tidal Lagoon Scheme in Swansea that our Shadow Business Secretary Becky Long Bailey visited last week, that is an example of a huge opportunity. To invest to kickstart a whole new industry that will lead to more investment and more jobs elsewhere around the UK. To create tens of thousands of skilled jobs and quality apprenticeships. To help keep the lights on in this country and meet our energy needs. And to help decarbonise our economy and ensure that as Labour has pledged that 60% of our energy comes from renewable sources by 2030. So I say to the Tory ministers in London, stop dithering and act now to invest in all our futures. We know what happens when the government dithers. We saw it with the steel industry last year. A foundation industry for our country and one which must be supported by a government procurement strategy too. Because how can it be that under the Tories, the Ministry of Defence is commissioning Nordic steel for our defence needs, while the Scottish SNP government is using Chinese steel for the fourth bridge? What is wrong with our steel industry? Changing our economy is also... <laughs> Changing our economy is also about ownership, so that we all share in the rewards. The privatisation of our utilities and our industries was the biggest ever redistribution of wealth in this country to the very richest few. It gave the privatised industries the green light to hike prices, cut staff, cream off higher profits at all our expense and asset strip. Across much of Europe, energy and water 
are now being brought into public ownership, whether nationally, regionally, or locally. And when things are run in public ownership, the profits don't go to the few wealthy shareholders, they go to us all. We have to put back minimum standards too for the labour market, the housing market, the injustice and insecurity has to stop. Work must pay a living wage. A home must be the bedrock of security for everyone, whether renting, buying or owning. Security at home and security at work are the foundation stones of a good life. They will underpin Labour's promise to the country. The Tories never have and never will promise that because fundamentally they're on the side of the rogue landlord and the bad employer. In Westminster last year, the Tories voted down a Labour amendment to the housing bill that simply would have required that homes for rent be fit for human habitation. They voted that down. When Labour councils bring in landlord licensing, the Tories oppose it. When Labour brought in the minimum wage, the Tories opposed it. And they continue to attack trade unions because they know that unity is strength. They know that by acting collectively, workers can stand up to bad bosses. So very simply, here's three things the Labour government will do. We will build the homes that people need to live in, not the investors need to make a profit out of. Secondly, we will make the minimum wage a real living wage of at least £10 per hour by 2020. And we'll repeal the Tories Trade Union Act. And don't think Tories can't be defeated. We defeated them when they tried to change tax credits. We defeated them on police cuts, forced them into a retreat on national insurance contributions to self-employed after only a few days. When we stand up together united, we can and we will defeat them. <laughs> Our vision is all the more important as we head to the uncertainty of Brexit. Uncertain because of the recklessness of Boris Johnson, David Davis and Liam Fox. And uncertain because of the complacency of Theresa Hammond, Theresa May and Philip Hammond. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Businesses need reassurance on investment, but they also need, as the Welsh Labour Government has demanded, full and unfettered access to the single market. The Foreign Secretary says it would not be apocalyptic to leave the European Union without a deal. It would be perfectly okay, he says. Tell that to Ford workers at Bridge End. Tell that to steel workers at Port Talbot. Tell that to Airbus workers at Broughton. Their jobs depend on our exports to Europe, to our full and unfettered access to the single market. I know that our Shadow Secretary, Keir Starmer, and our Shadow Trade Secretary, Barry Gardner, will be working alongside Carwin Mark and the team to ensure that Labour stands up for people's jobs, economy and investment. That is our agenda in the negotiations over leaving the European Union. And we'll... We're also making it very clear that as a starting point, European Union nationals that have come to this country, made their homes here, made such an enormous contribution to our health service, education and so many other roles in our lives should be allowed to remain here. Give them certainty. Don't put them through the trauma they're going through at the present time. And I've asked our sister socialist parties all across the European Union to promote exactly the same for British people living anywhere across the European Union. And do you know what? They all agree to support that and will be doing their best to promote that within their own parliaments. That socialist parties across national frontiers working together for the good of everybody across this continent. That's what socialism's about.
the Labour Party has been most successful when we've been our most united. Whatever our differences, we all know that what unites us is so much more and so much stronger. And we know that our communities need a Labour Council, a Labour Mayor and a Labour Government. In Wales this May, we will be defending over 500 seats in 22 unitary authorities. And we lead 12 of those councils, 10 outright. And I know that Carwin and all members of the party in Wales will be united in not only defending those councils, but fighting to make gains too, including here in Denbyshire. Whether it's at the Town Hall in Cardiff Bay or at Westminster, Labour being in power means having someone who is standing up for you. It's quite simple. United we stand, divided we fall. And united, I believe this great party can do things together to achieve for the people that need Labour councils and above all need a Labour government and a society based on social justice and equality, not greed and inequality. Thank you very much for inviting me here today.